the Commonwealth Heads of Government Summit to consider Juma, saying Juma has exemplary served uh, as one of Kenya's top diplomats and has experience following her previous duties as Foreign Affairs CS. We now cross over live to the Serena Hotel where Ministry of Foreign Affairs CS Ambassador Rachel Omamo, uh, Cabinet Secretary, is making the formal introduction to the Commonwealth okay. diplomats. Dr. Juma has an indisputable track record of strategic leadership, management, representation, and knowledge of government, regional and multilateral relations, international development, security, and humanitarian issues. She holds unparalleled credentials as a diplomat of vast experience, an administrator of peace and security at the regional and international levels, She's a crafter of foreign policy and is adept at diplomatic engagement. She's a consensus builder and an exemplar of Commonwealth values. Excellency, my other task here today is to reiterate Kenya's request for the support and endorsement of your esteemed governments and countries of this nomination. We seek your favorable consideration of Ambassador Dr. Juma as the seventh Secretary General of our organization. In this regard, I'm glad to note that I've already been in touch with several of my colleagues in the Commonwealth to deliver this request ahead of the formal submission of the nomination. I look forward to engaging with your excellencies as we seek consensus for a candidate whom the Commonwealth family can count on to build on our past successes and to set us on a path to a stronger and more influential organization. I'm confident that Dr. Juma will deliver well on this big promise. It is now my pleasure to, represent, uh, to present to you Ambassador Juma in person, live and in color, uh, to enable her uh, to speak to you. And we congratulate you, my sister, on that nomination. Haribo. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Rachel. Excellencies, High Commissioners, colleague, Madam Cabinet Secretary for MFA, DGs, senior staff here present, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know, in this country we greet, yes? So thank you very much. Let me begin my statement really by thanking Ambassador Rachel Momo, the Cabinet Secretary of Foreign Affairs, for convening this session and to thank yourselves, Excellencies, for accepting our invitation at a short notice. Ambassador Mamo convened this session to formally present me and my candidature for the position of the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, first of all to the family of the Commonwealth domiciled in Nairobi. I also wish to express my gratitude to the MFA teams that have been working very hard on the run-up to the official nomination yesterday by His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta. We convene here because of that nomination by His Excellency President Kenyatta, in which he has presented my candidature for the post of the Secretary General of the Commonwealth. I am honored and deeply humbled by His Excellency the President's immense confidence in me I am humbled by his launch of my candidature yesterday, and I welcome his commitment of Kenya's support in the run-up to the determination of the candidature. I will henceforth, as Ambassador Rachel has said, be working to seek the support and endorsement of the entire Commonwealth family for my candidature. It is the request, as has been placed before you, to each head of mission here in Nairobi to convey this request and that of my president to their headquarters for a, hopefully a favorable positive consideration of this candidature. The reason we have this candidature is because I believe firmly that I 
I am a visionary, strategic, innovative, and transformatory leader with a track record of successful public service, proven commitment, and integrity that I have developed in service in government, in research and policy institutions, in private organizations, at the national, regional, and international levels. I have had the chance to work with some of you when I was in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but let me just lift out a couple of the things that I have done, so that when you go, you don't say, who are we talking to? I serve, as Madam Brecher has said, in the Ministry of Defense, where, in charge of defense at this point, I chair the contact group on against piracy of the coast of Somalia. But at the De Department of Defense, I came to that ministry from MFA, where I served for four years, first as a principal secretary and then as a minister. During that time, I think it is fair to say that our nation scaled the heights of diplomacy, becoming an undisputable demonstrative leader in the international and multilateral arena. At that time, we deepened our credentials, whether it was in terms of dealing with complex issues of regional peace, counterterrorism, environment, climate crisis, youth and gender, and a range of other multilateral engagement. I recall in the period of four years, we became a convening capital on all matters international. We hosted a number of conferences, including the first UNEA, UN Habitat, the second UNEA as well. We hosted the International Conference on Reproductive Health. We hosted the first renowned Blue Economy Conference, which really became a watershed in terms of the contribution of the blue economy to sustainable development. We led on the debate on sustainable development and we crowned it by bidding, and successfully so, for the United Nations elective seat in the Security Council. I came to the MFA having served in the triad of security of government at the level of the principal secretary, first in defense, where we build business systems that, in my view, have become a model across government. I served in the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government, where I, did, I drove institutional reforms across all the departments of that ministry, immigration, registration of persons, police reforms, and especially on counterterrorism. You will recall, those of you that have been following the history of our nation, we had very heightened sense of threat. We drove policy, we wrote the policy on counterterrorism and against violent extremism. We established multi-agency formations in terms of dealing with terrorism, and the effect of that was for all to see, the reduction of the threat and vulnerability of our nation to terrorism. And so I come to this, I believe, with a range of expertise as far as diplomacy is concerned. I served as the permanent representative to the African Union, to IGAD, to UNECA, and served as ambassador to Ethiopia and Djibouti. That experience I, uh, enabled me to engage with critical issues around negotiation and consensus building on difficult multilateral and regional issues. But I came to the top executive levels of the government of Kenya from a strong research and policy analysis background, having served in a range of policy institutions on the continent as well as internationally. I served a research fellow with the International Peace Academy. I served with the African Institute of South Africa, I served with Safe Africa. I consulted for NEPAD and the African Union, led teams that developed a range of policy documents in the African Peace and Security Architecture, 
the African Governance Architecture. I chaired the subcommittee that developed the Vision 2063. And so I believe throughout this work, I have accumulated a range of competencies and skills sets that can take the Commonwealth Secretariat to the next level, that will enable the forging of collective action to address the current and future challenges confronting the member states of the Commonwealth effectively. As Ambassador Rachel has indicated, the Commonwealth family, alongside the rest of the world, is at a pivotal moment. A number of factors on the global scene today present challenges, but they also come with opportunities. I see the diversity of the Commonwealth as one of the single strongest points if it is leveraged effectively. And I'm glad to note that despite the shocks that multilateralism and the current COVID-19 pandemic has brought onto the world, the 54 members of the Commonwealth continue to hold together. And I think this is an aspiration that must be built upon. At the core of my vision is the imperative to build consensus and to galvanize collective action by member states. This, I believe, will enable us to address the most pressing needs facing the Commonwealth, including the need for recovery after the ravages of COVID-19, climate crisis, economic growth and integration, terrorism and violent extremism, leveraging the youth dividends, and working towards the realization of the Sustainable Development Goals, and indeed, really dealing with the recovery of what has been taken away by the vulnerability that the, the pandemic has brought upon us. I will also endeavor to leverage the opportunities presented by our diversity for the development and shared prosperity of the entire Commonwealth. I believe the Commonwealth has made great strides in delivering on the needs of its member state. And it is my intention to build on the Commonwealth's past successes, but to transform it into a vibrant organization that delivers on these needs, that remains seized of the current and future threats facing its membership, and that advances the collective interests of the Commonwealth within the broader international arena. For all this to happen, I am persuaded, as my president is, that the Commonwealth's leadership will be instrumental in steering the organization to leverage its diversity, to harness the immense opportunities it possesses. In this regard, it will be my intention to create effective teams around the core values and principles of the Commonwealth as articulated in the Commonwealth Charter. This, I believe, will enable us to deliver on the common aspirations of the people of this Commonwealth and that it will steer us to new and greater heights. As Secretary General of the Commonwealth, I will deploy a three-pronged approach to transform the Commonwealth into a dynamic, responsive, and influential organization. This approach will focus on thematic areas aimed at positioning us as a competitive and influential player in the international system. First, I will focus on commitment in order to support the preservation of the Commonwealth core values and principles among member states. And I think this is critical, especially if you look at the state of the democratic project across the world. Second, I will forge and strengthen connections, connections among the members, but also connections between the members and other critical partners in order that we can achieve shared prosperity